Alright. First off, spoilers for up to episode 4 of God of High School. Imagine that. Second of all, I hope to finish this up before episode 5 comes out, but I'm not sure how likely that is. So just keep in mind that this is not accounting for whatever developments may or may not occur in the next episode. With that out of the way, let's start. What the actual hell was episode 4? It was one of the worst single episodes of any show I've seen in quite a while. At least the one I did not think was bad from the get-go. First off, this whole episode felt much more like a filler episode of a long-running shounen than anything else, with the main plot being completely sidelined in favor of a really shoehorned single-character-focused episode, meant to make her more sympathetic and give us more insight into her background and motivation. Which is very cool and needed at this stage of the narrative, at least in theory. However, this is not how you go about it. First, we're introduced to this obviously, at least douche, but most likely evil asshat, who proposes to you out of the blue. After which follows a sequence of very confusing, at least to me, sequences of scenes through which we are really awkwardly cued into the fact that she not only accepted, apparently, but that the wedding will be held pretty much immediately. This along with being introduced to the relevant side characters, their roles in this character mini-arc, and even more background info. What I have a problem with here is the presentation of these sequences, as well as the rushed manner with which this whole sequence kicks off. I know Sinbad's sudden proposal was meant to be funny and its unexpectedness was the crux of that, but I still think that the equally sudden sequence of events which followed completely lacked any weight because of that. We all, as viewers, in a meta sense, do not expect you to get married and actually abandon the tournament. That'd be really weird based on what we so far know about her character and the show itself. But these things should nonetheless be presented in such a way so that at least a small amount of doubt is present in the mind of the viewer. And even though you don't think she will actually follow through with the marriage, you, as the viewer, actually feel the weight of the whole situation, making it so that even though an unlikely development, it is not an impossible one. But to do this, you would have to narratively develop the whole situation, let it sink in, make the douche be not so obviously douchey, establish the relevant characters prior to the whole event, and so on. The whole episode felt more as a cheap groundwork for the further development of the story and other characters, while giving us just enough of you so to narratively rationalize her getting the short end of the stick. More on that soon. Also, I'm just now realizing I should not have used her first name. This is really confusing. Next point. This guy. <laughs> I've, uh, <laughs> I've already mentioned the fact that um, he absolutely reeked of being an uninteresting episodic villain from the start. But my god of high school, this guy is a gift that just keeps on giving. I don't want to make this too long, and he's honestly not even worth an analysis, so I'm just going to mention the two things that had me bursting in laughter this episode regarding him. First, did he genuinely attempt to murder two teenagers with a goddamned katana right in front of dozens of witnesses? Let's also not forget that uh, this was before you had decided not to go through with the marriage. I'm sure talking like a prima donna supervillain and attacking her friend with a dangerous weapon all the while her young sister watches it all occur in the background, truly, truly makes for a memorable reception. What was he planning for the wedding night? A mass ritual sacrifice of all her classmates so as to use their blood as lubricant? The second thing... So, uh, do you remember how just one episode prior when the Jojo stand appeared, it was kinda cool, obviously menacing, and something that completely overwhelmed the so far unreasonably broken and unstoppable main character? Yeah, all the tension and intrigue was single-handedly shut on by this episode. The guy summoned... I love how he says that. And was completely bodied by you, with arguably less difficulty than her previous matches. Sure, she got cut, but that was presented more like she allowed him to do it? Like a power move? Than anything else. She didn't really attempt to avoid or mitigate it in any way. The uh, whole Jojo stand thing really came out of almost nowhere, 
and the coolness of it was destroyed in much the same way only one episode later. Now, let's uh, move on to the final point. Use injury and the end of the episode. That was really stupid. Not what happened, but the execution of it. First, we get zero insight into the seriousness of the injury. Uh, the way she took it made it seem more as a... Just a flesh wound. ...than anything else. And the characters around her made no mention of it. Also, it really doesn't help that we have zero idea how much time has passed between the scenes. Uh, hell, even the episodes. Later, we cut to her being pummeled, and obviously forgoing all his code of fair play after the worsening state, or potential death, though I doubt that, of his, um, I wanna say, brother? Friend? I didn't really catch that. And sure, this would have been an interesting development. But I really don't see why they decided to not make it an actual fight, in which we'd be really able to see Han's ruthlessness and the gravity of Yu's injury. This is what I was referring to when I mentioned earlier that the main plot of episode 4 was meant to cheaply rationalize this development, and more importantly, this cliffhanger! The whole reasoning behind her loss is based in a really poorly executed episode, which I believe really takes away from both her, Han, and the show itself. There's also a bunch of smaller things that uh, ruffled my jimmies, but as I said at the beginning, I want to try to get this out before episode 5, so I'm gonna stop here. I kinda hate that I feel like I have to say this, but these are just my opinions. If you disagree with them, that's 100% fine. I'm just another guy with an anime avatar yelling into the ether. So uh, keep that in mind. In any case, I hope you found the video entertaining. Sub if you like this kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.